What do you have for us this week in the uh, integration discussion? You want to kind of dive in here and check it out? So we, so we have another one for Cam Board. I don't know. Is, is this our last one? Do we have um, a few more here? I think we have users and groups and um, maybe do we have analytics left? We're definitely wrapping up. Uh, I, I would like to touch on analytics. I don't know if user management necessarily needs to be addressed. It's it's fairly straightforward. Uh, I also have troubleshooting here. So maybe okay. we could put together something on that. Although I believe that would be something we would probably learn more so as we go through and, and document different fixes and stuff. Um, I, I, I think this is at least going to be uh, the... The beginning of the end of of what we need to touch on uh, for cam board here so we're definitely definitely coming to a close and this is going to start to overlap into stuff that we've already previously discussed so i'm not gonna i'm not gonna say i i need to keep to something strict but this is this is going to be referencing a lot of the the stuff that we've already gone through so uh, let's just dive in here by board customization what i would like to go over is how do we use our boards a little bit more eloquently, uh, a little bit more accurately. How do, how do we tweak them and tune them so that they're useful for us? There is a lot I could go over here. I pulled out what I thought would be beneficial and we can obviously check between, between the two of us go into if something else makes sense to, to touch on or, or put into this. But I, I, I believe I captured everything that I, I wanted to here. So I wanted to start off with uh, custom filters. Custom filters are searches that you can share among the team. They look just like regular filters that you can share with the rest of the board. Last episode or two episodes ago, we were talking about the search filter of Camboard and how to search by assignee, how to search by due date, various other things there is and i don't believe we went over this but on the board next to the search bar itself there is a drop down which has predefined filters to apply for instance uh, my tasks my tasks due tomorrow not assigned assigned no category etc etc so those are all predefined filters that you can apply and, and, and have it run to find tests that you're looking for. If there are filters that you find yourself using over and over, for instance, we every other week look for tasks that are not complexitized. Those, those types of searches would be good to put into custom filters because you can have a similar type drop down. I think it's like two buttons over, which uh, will give you, or actually the next button over, excuse me, which would give you the custom filter. So you can, you can start searching through the tasks as you go through them. Now, one of the things I did, the first thing I did is uh, in the integration session, uh, that I recorded that's been posted up on YouTube. I went over some of the Camboard plugins in a little bit more depth than we went over in the podcast episode and was talking about the group assignment plugin and how that required a specific search term to look at all of the tasks that had the assignee either as your own self or that you were listed as one of the other assignees to the tasks. And the actual keyword for that is all assignees. Um, now, if you look at the predefined filter, the predefined filter will have just assignee as a filter. So it actually won't catch those other tasks that the plugin allows us to categorize as. So one of the custom filters that I created was a my assigned tasks filter that popped up the all assignees tag so that it would in fact include all of the tasks that I would be concerned about. And now I have that as a convenient drop down right there for me and as does Jack. And since I filtered it on the currently logged in user, while Jack is the logged in user on his end, when he runs that filter, he's going to show all of his tasks. When I run it, I'm going to show all of my tasks. So that makes it easier for us to to kind of share these filters that we would use on a common basis. Uh, for instance, we have a, I, I, I broke them down under the 
categories or the excuse me the tags that we, that have. we have yeah so the the content marketing tests the resiliency tracking user information etc cetera, etc cetera. so we have those and and i believe we'll continue to to build on it and uh like the the complexity one i think is is one that we're going to be putting in there to make sure that him and i can level set on the the kinds of filters that we're, we're going through when we're taking a look at these tasks um the next thing here uh, in, in customizing your board is predefined content. And Jack, I, th I think we talked about the way that we structured the tasks uh, and, and, and made sure we had different, different fields to fill out and, and parameters that we wanted to see in the task description. So if you could refresh everyone on those, we'll kind of dive in how to do that on a larger scale. Yeah, so you're talking about the uh, why, how, and... Done. Why, done, and how. Uh, so... What's that? Basically, essentially, we want to know why we're doing this task, you know, what it is when it's complete, and then how we're going to complete this task. I, I usually think of what context are we in, and what is it, the big thing is when is this task completed? So what we're able to do with predefined content is front load some of that into the description of the, the tasks as we create them. Obviously, those three details are not fields that Canboard gives to us like that's that's not we like a field that we would would fill in yeah that's that's something that that we kind of free form and and put in ourselves uh predefined content allows us to have a drop down under the new task and that we're able to select that selection will pre-populate both the task title as well as the task description and give us those fields. So for instance, we're able to auto-populate the why, done, and how prompts. And, and literally they're just, you know, words with a colon after them so that we remember, we remind ourselves, hey, I need to define all three of these things when I'm creating this task. And that dropdown will, will automatically put those in for us and we can just continue filling out the task as normal. Uh, so that's a that's a good heads up. It is fairly limited. I think the only thing it allows for is the task title and the predefined contents. I would love if it included stuff like complexity and uh, assignee and, and and stuff like that. But uh, as a as a base implementation, it's it's perfectly it's a, fine for for yeah. that scenario. Yeah. Those those predefined uh, contents there. Can you explain how to use those? Because honestly, I've created tasks. Is that something I have to Gener I have to generate it with that using that. So do I have to go to predefined content and say, "Hey, I'm going to use this task," or is there a way to? So I, and I'll I'll when walk creating a new task. I, I will I will walk through this in our integration session video that we post up to YouTube. Uh, but basically, whenever you're creating a new task, there's going to be a drop down right below the task description field, which you can select any one of the predefined contents that you specify inside of the project configuration. So you can have five, six, seven predefined contact, you know, what, whatever Out makes there, sense yeah. for what, for what you're doing. Uh, the one we have is going to be selectable whenever you create a new task right below the project description field. And it's just going to be uh, titled why slash done slash how like it's, it's just the, it's the, easy the as that. yeah, the description that we, we have given it there. Uh, and I said that the title will be the name of the predefined content and it is available underneath the description of any new task. Next, I wanted to touch on how boards are represented in the dashboard. And I'm sure for the last couple of episodes, I've, I've touched on the dashboard being the most important part of the workflow. It being the first thing that you see when you go to your page and all of your open tasks and yada, yada, yada. But I don't think I've touched on how to limit what's actually shown on there. So the, the easiest way to do that is by limiting the columns that are actually shown on there. Obviously, since this is a CAM board system, a lot of the states are represented as columns. So if we consider a workflow to be left to right, I'm probably only going to be able to work on tasks that are in one, maybe two different columns. So it would be worthless if I had every, 
every column Everything represented. Open, right? Yeah, all the tasks in every column represented on my front page dashboard. So unfortunately, it's not on a dashboard level, but it's in a project by project level where you're going to specify which columns are visible on the dashboard. So we would go to the the configuration here, you know, in in any given project and and select which of our columns are visible on the dashboard. Obviously, this is the same place you would go when you are creating a column or deleting a column, uh, but that would just be the extra step to specify whether you want those to be visible on your dashboard or not. I think by default, when you're creating these, it comes with th a three column system, a to do, doing, and done. And doing is the only one that is visible on the dashboard by default. Uh, and then any other columns that are created will, I'm not sure what the default is, uh, but it is selectable at the time that you create the column. Okay. Yeah. It's nice to know that your dashboard, I don't know if you configured this or not. I see it highlighted in red, so I assume it's configured that it's visible on the dashboard and you only have in progress listed. That's, that's correct, a great yeah. way. That's a very easy way to see everything in essentially in progress for you versus Hey, by the way, here's every single one of your tasks that's out there, which like you said, it's kind of useless. It's, it's too much. It's almost uh information overload. Well, and, and, you know, we haven't exactly had the conversation, but it might be worth having the review column visible as out well, there, because right, if, right. if something's in the review column, it's something I need to review. That means you need to take a look at, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, so that may be worth taking a look at as well. Once again, Depends on the specific implementation of, you know, what's a workflow, what can be done, what is best next. And I think that's just, you know, if, yeah. if you start there, you're going to end up at a good place. So, so if you start thinking what's best next, well, what's best next is not what's in the backlog. So we can, we can immediately rule that out uh, <laughs> and then just follow that logic to its, its logical conclusion. The last thing I have in the notes here is sorting the tasks in the dashboard. Now there is a drop down sort for most of the sections in the dashboard. And that sorts it by default by priority. This is also another reason why I say the 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 swim lanes that you set up should ha be correlating should correlate to the priority that you have in some form or fashion meaning that the higher priority however however you define that is going to be on top i just you know i don't i don't know what that means for all specific boards I'm, I'm not even sure if there is any kind of universal but i'm saying if you have different swim lanes on your board make sure the top is what's important you know whether it's uh, different sections of your job, the top should be like the, the business unit because that's that's the thing that actually gets you money, right? right. So there is, there is a default that Camboard gives that default sorts it to priority. And I, I typically do end up sorting uh, either by due date um, or by category if I want to see those grouped together. The problem with that is, though is that it it relies on a on a URL parameter to actually take effect. So it it will survive a page refresh, but and and it also might be a good thing to bookmark if you want a different default sort. You can bookmark the URL with all of the parameters and that will give you the the sort that you're looking for by default if you want something other than priority. But if you but barring one of those two approaches, you will always be greeted with priority by default. Um, and I think that's that's really all I wanted to go through. That's all I had to go through. Okay. Uh, I know there's there's a lot we can talk about, and I I don't I didn't know if I wanted this to devolve into you know what a board setup should look like. You know what are some common board setups and and stuff like that. But I think I think what I wanted to do is is applicable to any type of board setup what would be the things that you would want to tweak in order to have a better 
a first five second view of your board like your first oh, like what do you want to call that like where you snapshot like a quick i don't know overview quick at yeah I overview mean, yeah 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 like what is your what is your initial like i think it's a one... snapshot snapshot of the board just where what's everything what's going on with it a snapshot is good, but a snapshot implies that I'll be sitting down to kind of analyze it. Like I'm, I'm talking about something where I just, I pull it up on my screen and what I got in front of me is what I got in front of me. And it better be worth me looking at it. Like it, it, it better convey exactly what I need a quick it to over, like a quick over. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, quick overview, honestly. Yeah. I, I, how, how do mind. I get that? How do I get that valuable overview? You know, how, how do I say this is, this is valuable to know that this is like, I have, I have three things right here on my dashboard. Like that's, that's it of all the tasks I got, uh, in, in, in flight here between, uh, reviewing and getting ready to do and, and waiting on and stuff. The three things that are right in front of my face here, um, include like the, the podcast reporting is, is the podcast recording is one of them right here that's that's important because that's what we're doing right now that was coming up all day i needed to know that that was something that was going on so um and then i you know i look at my board and by default i actually have this the open status of of our board so i i just take a look at everything and then i start to filter down and we talked about collapsing columns on a on a previous yeah. Uh, test, but you you start to filter it, especially for the the t- uh, the test between you and me. You know, having having two people on our on our board, right? I I filter it down to only my assigned tasks, and it makes it that much easier, right? Or easier to look at, right? If up. I'm if I'm in a mood to just kind of code, I know a lot of the resiliency tasks that we're doing are code heavy. Right. Then not, not a lot of creating content and stuff like that. I can just sit down in front of a terminal and just kind of bash something out. No pun intended. So I pull up the, the, uh, the resiliency tasks and, uh, well, it turns out I don't have any right now cause I did them all cause I didn't want to create any more content. <laughs> but if, you know, if I, if I wanted to, they would be there. So uh, stuff like that is, is going to make me more efficient navigating this board and it's it's going to make this board work for me and and do for me what it needs to which is focus my effort into what's best next oh i guess i'll touch on why i named the show neapolitan board Uh, but no i was i was thinking more about the board views themselves and you know what what do we see when we log in what's our what's our overview our our snapshot i gotta come up with a better term for that but you know what's our what's our split second reactional overview to that and how do we move that from a vanilla setting to to a a Ah, neapolitan okay 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 all right so indicating that you know we're not doing a whole bunch here we're not you know customizing on css or or anything here but we're we're where you know just putting some chocolate and strawberry or, uh, around the edges to, to make it that much better so the uh not quite the icing on the cake that that would be a different analysis